explain it, but my previous car, the belt came off of the door, and when it happened, it wouldn't fly open because the belt's on. Yeah. But this would, as far as it would like that. I don't know if you know this, but we're almost neighbors. I live on until a second. Until a second. Down, 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 down. Well, no, you ever heard from people about that position? Yeah. yeah. I'm on the list to be raised to an export. Yeah, so yeah. it's a good uh, oh, okay. yeah. yeah. so She emailed everybody. And I tried to go 20 The email, because it's public, is not secret. Well, the only but one. I looked it up just to confirm it on the <laughs> website so that I wasn't yeah. revealing any oh. semi secret information. I, 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 I push for you. You're the only male on the of the 10 people. Yeah. Um, and so you're about to go to Hillsborough or Portland, you know, which is, you know, either here or there. Something like that. You really have to have a diverse group. Yeah, and when I'm heading towards Portland, I'm heading towards Portland. Folks, you guys want to get started? Yeah, they do that. My, most of my associates are a little bit more than a little a a yeah, I'll get to the mallet. Yeah, I'll get hit with it. Down beneath the school. Yep. I've run into her there a couple of times. So, folks, I'm going to get started with uh, basically a description of the train wreck of trying to book this meeting for speakers. So, um, uh, first, it was going to be a panel of real estate agents until I started doing a dry run with them because I wanted to talk about the Aloha real estate market, which I thought would be really topical. The conversation quickly turned into something I couldn't defend, which was uh, this horrific attack of the county. And I wanted to just have lively discussions, but where these real estate <laughs> agents were going, I couldn't defend, and I couldn't show my face in public after about 30 seconds worth of their conversations. So that went into the trash bin. Uh, then was this successive parade of different speakers who realized that they had um, a, a sports conflict. Um, uh, next month, I've got a, a, a confirmed yes from Mike Riley. So um, um, I'm getting a nice nod from Mr. Dahlstrom. Mike Riley runs Riley Research. Riley Research is a very well-respected and pretty generously paid uh, um, entity that does statistical research. They, they, they call... Um, they do canvassing, and I think they also got about $120,000 for their work on the Aloha Rebuild study. No. Uh, no? 30. 30? I'm off by... Oh, okay. Well, they did make a little bit of money, but uh, I've met uh, with Mike uh, Riley informally at the Washington County Public Affairs Forum, and uh, he agreed to come out and uh, go into some of the methodology of this, and so I wanted to kind of peek under the hood because uh, they're spending a lot of, we're having a lot of our own money spent on a lower refill, and uh, having Mike decrypt some of the data is uh, not only a treat, but he is a real um, political analyst and someone who is, uh, um, your access to him for free is coveted. Bring your questions. Uh, a couple of the other folks that uh, ducked out was uh, uh, Mayor Dirksen, <laughs> who's... <laughs> you got Badoo. the button. <laughs> Thanks. Me. Uh, and uh, I, we, uh, uh, Councillor Dirksen was uh, at the uh, um, TAC, was it TAC committee meeting? No, it was yeah. the uh, elected, uh, no, it was the uh, leadership, leadership or organization committee. Leadership coordinating. Coordinating. LCC. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, uh, Councillor Dirksen is likely to be here in March or April. If he can't do March, I think we're going to place him in April. So um, working on some of the higher, like the state and higher level VIPs, I'm looking to just kind of book things through October and see if you'll have me back next year for, uh, uh, for another year of uh, being your CPO chair. However, it just led to um, you know speaker after speaker canceling. So what I want to do is, uh, if we have public safety reports, great, if, um, they show up. And if not, I just kind of want to go through some committee reports um, because uh, Hal, you're always doing something with the Mike Head Committee, and Lyles, you've always got something in the mailbox. And 
your idea about having just uh, you know what's going on in, uh, in people's heads and you know uh, getting some ideas out, I'm all about that too. So I did try to put together a formal uh, to-do list, and we don't have the sheriff's department or Twelfth Valley Fire and Rescue here yet. So um, hey, Steve. Yeah. You want to jump in and tell us sure. uh, about what's going on with uh, a little rebuild and TV Highway? Okay. Um, Can I do a quick one on the Sheriff's Department? Sure. sure. Do, do any of you all know who Lorenzo Rubio is in Crime Commission? Yes. He's retiring. Yeah. Just, uh, just to let you know. There's a Oregonian article out on his retirement. I don't think it's been published in fact, but it's... Yeah, it has been. Oh, it has been in fact. Is it in like today's paper or yesterday's? I saw the last few days. I think it was in the Argus, actually. Okay. Argus, no well, he's done a lot of contribution. I just didn't know how many of y'all knew who he was. Uh, there's okay. something else at the uh, going on at the sheriff's office. Is they're doing some training. I think that's something MYB, MYO, and they um, changed the password on me, so I can't get on the internet. But there's it's like a neighborhood leader. Uh, coordination for disasters and I found out uh, oh. and they're, I think they're having one of the training sessions at uh, um, the Murray Road facility for the sheriff's office and I wanted to share that and I think I'll just put it on the, uh, the Facebook page because they're doing some outreach to kind of train people to handle your own disasters I think the premise the first paragraph was um, most of the help you receive in disasters from your neighbors and not from the government. Right. So it's about training neighborhood leaders in order to take charge of that. And I'm sorry, um, two of us tried to log onto the internet here and they changed the password, so I can't pull that up. Now, who's doing that? The sheriff's office. Sheriff's office. They should put that in the sheriff's office newsletter. It may or it may be in no. the next one. Oh, okay, in the next one because uh, there was just the, the one I just came one that just came out two days ago was I got Lorenzo's story. In. Right, um, and there was also another, uh, at least in my world, kind of a, a, a sad uh, um, keynote thing, and that was uh, uh, Counselor Forrest, uh, Forrest Soth passed away, um, I think yesterday, yeah. Yeah. and he had been incredibly active in the community and uh, um, was on uh, uh, water commissions up until like 2010 or last year even. Chair, chaired a meeting in October. Yeah. Of something that he was on. 94. At 94. And uh, I like what Hal put on the internet, uh, Facebook, is that uh, Forsoth earned Hal's respect because Forsoth, in his youth, rode on the plank road into Portland on his bicycle cool. to work at a dairy. <laughs> oh, wow. And yeah. to, I believe it. <laughs> um, to have someone with that scope of vision who has seen the build out of the community. That person had an x-ray of the bones in the community that's really going to be lost. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a board member of the Washington County Public Affairs Forum, it was traditional that he got the first question. Yeah. And that yeah. well into I was looking forward to that. Uh, as I mentioned on the Facebook page, I've known Forrest for many years through my uh, involvement with the city of bicycling. And <clears throat> it's my first time to speak before the forum. And I, was, I wanted him to be there. Yeah. He wasn't there. Yeah, I was looking forward to that, and he didn't fail me when I was mm -hmm. when I did that. Yeah. He's a, always a thoughtful question. Yes, oh, not yeah. a hardball question, but yep. a thoughtful one. Yep. I got hit with two forest questions. One was evil genius <laughs> put me in my place, and the other one was uh, a glad happy pat on the back. Cool. And uh, um, I'm I am so grateful for his him. service, yeah, and I wanted to kind of acknowledge that. Oh, uh, but um, um, he's, 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 he's a great guy. Steve, does that uh, buy you enough time in order yep. to uh, jump in? And, well, let's uh, see. I didn't bring my schedule, so I can't tell you when our next CAC meeting is. Isn't it, isn't it in a month? February 13th. Yeah. Yeah. February 13th. That, right here. The, the next Lowell Reedville CAC meeting. Um, uh, so anyhow, today was the leadership uh, group, the leadership coordinating committee, which is basically... Hey, get up there and talk on camera. Oh. It'll be on YouTube. Oh. <laughs> Gee, great. <laughs> so anyhow, um, inhales broke, uh, and that involved, uh, oh, that thing's bright. Uh, Working on. That involved uh, the uh, elected leaders, regional two metro councilors that represent this area, or one elect and one uh, existing metro councilor, uh, Catherine Harrington and uh, um, uh, former Mayor Dirksen. And then, um, of course, Andy Dyke was the chair of the meeting, Chairman Andy Dyke of the Board of Commissioners, and our, com 
Commissioner Dick Scouton, of course, was there, and um, County uh, the uh, County Administrative Officer and uh, the head of the Department of Land Use and Transportation, people from the uh, mayors of Beaverton and Hillsborough, and plenty of staff people and ODOT. Trimet. One ODOT people, TriMet person, Clean Water Services. So basically the service providers of the elected officials for, for this area, which is uh, the, the, the make up that group. Now I'm on that group um, as a uh, non-voting member representing the CAC of the, uh, of the Lower Reedville Planning Group. And um, uh, along with Jerry, she wasn't there today, but we're the, we're the two representatives from the CAC that go into that. And um, I thought it was a good meeting. Um, Mike uh, and the staff, as usual, did a good job of going over a lot of the stuff that we've seen in the past, recent past, uh, and some new stuff um, that has been going on the last year. I should say that there hasn't been a leadership meeting, leaders meeting since uh, December of, of 11. So it's been oh, 13 months. So, um, so quite a bit of stuff that's happened, of the, most of which we knew about in the, already in the lower process that we've discussed. In. Um, but it was an opportunity for a lot of those people to uh, hear about it for the first time and to discuss it back and forth. And um, it wasn't so much, uh, of course, uh, in, it was no particular projects. It was about how to approach the different kinds of issues, the housing issue, the economic development issue, uh, the redevelopment as it, as it is in Aloha. It was a, a way to discuss uh, uh, the fact that we're starting to, be, to begin to discuss the transportation part because, of course, the transportation part of the Aloha Reedville plan is uh, the TV Highway it's corridor study that's uh, been on the, kind of the back burner and doesn't meet very often, so I don't get to find out too often about it, do we, Al? <laughs> And uh, it's kind of a top-down group, and uh, you know, I, as I've told you before, I, I wasn't too impressed with, and you might have read in the last one, number four on this, I'm not terribly impressed with the TV Highway corridor planning process because early on they uh, decided that uh, they weren't really going to address any of the issues uh, regarding traffic in Aloha, I mean, in, either on TV Highway or on north-south in the sense that they're not looking at capacity improvements so much as um, they're looking at ways to move pedestrians and bicyclists and um, and to create some safer intersections but no real capacity improvements that I could that I'm garnering out of the process thus far I'm, I hope I'm wrong um, I'll be glad to admit I'm wrong if it's the case because I keep pushing that um, I see more density coming down the pike uh, in Aloha and Reedville, I also know that, um, and this is the term that they use today, the 800 pound, there's two 800 pound gorillas on our borders. One, the South Hillsborough area, and, and, and the other is to, to our north, the um, Amber Glen. <coughs> and um, many tens of thousands of people in those two locations uh, who will be uh, presumably using some of the roads here, particularly right here where they're directing traffic through Hello and Reedville. So uh, I just I, I'm very concerned that there that those really aren't getting addressed, and that's why I put this stuff on here. I do feel that some of the things that we we out came on early about, and that Hal's been very good at, at articulating the bicycle um, access for all all users, and uh, particularly pedestrians and access to transit, those kinds of things are going to be answered, I think, in the Aloha Reedville process and in the, the, in the TV Highway Corridor study. Um, how to pay for them, maybe, some, maybe not, or, but they're gonna call for these things to be done, and I think that will lead to the next discussion in the process, which is one of the things that some of the people in this room have been wanting to get to anyhow, which is governance. How do you get to the spot of either joining a city or forming a city? Um, yes. Question for you, Steve. Um, I noted with interest that the Hillsborough School District uh, did not seed that that area on Long Tile Flat and Shoals, and that was a good decision on their part. But interestingly enough, what that means for all the rest of us is that's going to knit that community socially with Hillsborough. Yeah. 
terms of youth sport leagues and yep. it's going to pull those people over the mountain into our neck of the woods yeah. uh, in a major, major way. Well, they're co those kids go to a Hillsborough school now. It's just they're going to build new schools over there and some of those people were hoping those their kids were going to go to the new school. Well, I mean, at, at current, they're going to go to Hill High. Yeah, but they are, right? So they're now. going to come over the mountain, and, I mean, hundreds of them, not yeah. dozens yeah, right. of them, You're hundreds right. of them. Yeah. Uh, so it's interesting to note from, a, from an impact on our community, all those people are going to come over the hill and come right down into Aloha yeah. and then go to Hill High and, uh, and play youth sports. They're going to be in Hillsboro soccer teams and Hillsboro baseball teams because those social groups tend to fracture with the school district boundaries. So Does it's it? going to pull a lot of people over the mountain. Who knows, maybe Hillsboro will build a school there of some sort, probably not a high well, school. Well, one day. Ultimately, yeah. that'll all yeah. be urbanized. But I mean, the, the near-term impact is there's going to be a lot more people coming over that mountain into Aloha yeah. as they build out that community. Yeah, and it's interesting. Another kind of twist on that is it's going to be an urban area. Hillsborough says it's not going to be in Beaverton. Correct. So is it going to be another urban unincorporated area? Well, actually, it is in Beaverton. And city-wise, it's in Beaverton. Hill school district Is it wise, in Beaverton in the city? It's in Hillsboro. But just not in Beaverton school. Are you talking about the area that just got annexed? Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. yes that's Beaverton. That's the South Cooper right. Mountain. South Cooper Mountain is uh, Beaverton out to Tile Flat Road. But yes. And, and it's, it's, there's been a couple of um, uh, newspaper reports on this. Yeah. And it's a five, it's, it's a money grab. Yeah, right. Well, I knew it was in the Hillsborough school district. Well, but I didn't realize sense. it was not going to, that it was actually going to be in the city of Beaverton. I guess, yeah. It is in the city of Beaverton. Okay. Uh, but, but a lot of those kids and families are going to come our way sure. because the school district and the school district activities are going to pull them our way. Yeah. And the things that fracture along school district lines, like youth sports league. Well, and then, yeah. Is yes. there any bets on whether Hillsboro will let Beaverton have those students? No. They've, they've already, already decided. No. It's, the answer is no. It's already been to the school board, and they're yeah. and they're they're not going Each to. Each kid comes with about sixty five hundred dollars. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I know what the reason is. Yeah. It's, it's well, funny. I mean, there's good reasons. No. There's a school there that's always been marginally viable for the Hillsboro School District, and now that school, that elementary school, will have plenty of kids, and and so Hillsboro had to make that decision, and they made a good decision. But the impact on that decision, uh, on the broader community, is those folks are going to come our way. Yeah. to a larger number than anybody probably is really thinking about. Okay, well, let's just, if we can close that, let's move on for a little bit so we can get going with the rest of the committee report. So let me just um, close by saying I think in terms of that leadership meeting today, it was good in the sense that um, I had a good, I sat next to the mayor of Hillsborough and had a good discussion with him about some small pieces about uh, South Hillsborough and the impacts on Low and Reedville. Um, and he agreed that we should get together and talk some more about it. It was suggested by Don Odermott, their transportation engineer, that the three of us get together, the mayor and Don and I, to me about I don't know, a month ago or so, whenever I saw him last. And uh, so I mentioned that to the mayor, and he uh, was very gracious and said, yeah, that'd be fine. And um, also, um, Councilor, Metro Councilor-elect Dirksen, uh, I talked to him afterwards a, a bit. You know, he's a former mayor of uh, Tiger, and he he was talking about asking me some actually some CPO history about uh, the planning of the area along Shoals Ferry Road that was in CPO six way back when in 1983 when the community plan was adopted. And of course, before that, when we were planning the area, he was asking me about what well, you know where all that density come from. And they had their theories, and I told them why it really came was because of the freeway corridor was there and we were all told to plan for the freeway corridor and the density would got denser the farther you went west. That's why all that density ended up out along the edge of the urban road boundary. And of course then that got trumped a bit when 2040 came along and overlaid the underlying densities and trumped it up a little bit or at least demanded that it, that it be built to the, to the density. And then um, uh, Metro's urban growth boundary amendments, South Hillsboro, uh, South Cooper Mountain, mountain one are being uh, required to have even higher densities by metro so you get what the tiger people apparently are calling the crust along the edge of the urban growth boundary the heavy density right along the edge and how that's difficult to service and so that brings me to, to number four on here the part about there's a two it's a two part or one parts about handling the increased density on the local surface street system 
the other part of it is how to handle the commuter trips and, you know, this I've maintained all along that the opportunity to do that is in urban growth boundary amendments, especially when you've got a string of them almost touching each other along the west edge of the boundary. That's the time to garner that, uh, that limited access corridor. We don't know what kind of vehicles we'll be all using in the future, but we do know that the rest of our region and the rest of the world pretty much uses limited access corridors to carry trucks, mass transit vehicles, max, and, uh, and uh, other wheeled uh, mass transit vehicles and private vehicles. And there's even some of the best bicycle corridors are in the limited access corridors so that, you know, no, there's no conflicts in those corridors, or turning conflicts, or, um, you know, they're just handled. And so I said, hey, look, this is the perfect opportunity. That's why you have urban growth boundary amendments, is to do the kind of planning, long-range planning that that takes. And so, anyhow, I had that little, we had the beginning of that discussion with uh, Councilor-elect Dirksen. So that was all, I thought, made the meeting went, go well. My plan was to present this to them at the meeting. Um, but beforehand, I talked to Mike and Dahlstrom, and, and then he suggested I talk to Chairman Dyke and uh, Andy Singalakis, the head of the Department of Land Use and Transportation, also. So they were there early, and I was there early, and so we, I asked them to take a look at it, and it was a very full agenda. And it really was, and I think Mike was right when he said, it's a little premature to talk about a lot of these kinds of uh, specific kinds of things. And probably the best point to talk about them is in the next part of, of the TV Highway Corridor study where uh, the solutions becomes part of the package. And then that comes to the, little, to the lower rebuild study. And we'll get a shot at it at that point. But um, interestingly enough, a couple of these things kind of came up in the process of the other discussions that other people were bringing up, so I did get a chance to kind of hit on it, especially, it's too bad Sandy and Janelle aren't here, but the flooding one came up with, uh, with uh, Clean Water Services, mentioned uh, that they have been trying to deal with, uh, it's that time of the year when people are getting flooded and as usual, Butternut Creek is causing problems, and so Steve, I, I hate to prompt you, but I'd like to prompt you to drill down on that point, because I was at that meeting as well. I heard Clean Water Services specifically use the term bathtub, and to basically perpetuate the conversation quickly, uh, I call it bathtubbing. And correct me if I'm wrong, I thought I also heard them say dynamic changes in the behavior of the creek. Did you hear something yeah, I, similar to that? Those two phrases. And, okay, and uh, also an, uh, whether it was raining more or, um, in other words, that Clean Water Services is mitigating their services due to behavioral, environmental behavioral changes. And there was basically a capitulation that um, we've built in places that we shouldn't have. Yeah. Would, would those be fair assessments of the conversation? I, I think that, uh, well, I, I, I would add one piece to that puzzle. I think one of the reasons Clean Water Services is paying attention is Sandy and Janelle. Yeah. They're bringing, I mean, um, let's face it, all, almost everybody, including us, reacts when stuff starts happening. And so Clean Water Services typically reacts more during flooding season. And that area um, that you're talking about that developed prior to a lot of land, good land use planning regarding surface water was the area uh, south of Farmington Road between 185th and 170th. That's the headwaters of uh, Butternut Creek. One of the headwaters, but it's a, it's a primary lowland headwater. It's that kind of bathtub at the bottom of Cooper Mountain. And then it comes back up again a bit as it gets towards and across uh, Farmington. So then, but you got that, you know, long next to Vale's Thriftway, you got that recreated wetland that surrounds the creek right there, and then it swings around and comes along in between a bunch of subdivisions and goes under 185th and basically under the football field at a little high school kind of or portions of it through big tubes and then pops out again and runs between subdivisions 200 to 209th. And so I said, I mentioned that, so she brought it up that, hey, we're, we're very concerned about that at CPO 6 because even a few inches of rise upstream caused, could be caused by uh, South Hillsboro, thousands of acres of rooftops and streets 
pouring into uh, Butternut Creek. Yeah, there'll be swales and ways to slow it down. But, you know, clean Water's got some very good programs for slowing down the water and cleaning it up on the way to the creeks, but it still gets there. And it doesn't take much to flood that area up there because, like Eric said, those houses were built prior to good planning. You go up there and you can see where they just basically pushed the creek in between property lines and it, that creek moved around. It probably maybe wasn't even a creek. It seemed to me there was just a lot of sawing up that way when I was a kid. But there, there became a creek and, and, uh, and it turned corners and, you know, went through inadequate uh, undergrowth culverts and so forth. Anyhow, I'd like you to take a look at this and because Mike's uh, told me just now that he's going to send this out to that leadership group tomorrow. And um, I wasn't aware that, we were, that he was going to do that, but that's fine. But I'm, I'm, I'm wanting it to be something that comes from not just me, and, but I got most of all of this stuff from the discussions we've been having and the survey that we did, took um, and, the, and the flooding presentation. And, uh, and it's been a persistent problem for many, many years, so it's nothing new. So um, I just wanted to get an okay, and and I realize it's a partial list, but part of the it, part of the reason it's partial is because we're making headway on a lot of the other issues. Steve, would you be opposed to me calling for a vote at the next meeting to approve the document? Um, be nice to have it have it now, so we had an approval when we went out. Well, then how about if we give people a chance to read it and maybe uh, call for a vote at the end of the meeting, if you That'd remind me. But I'm not going to let you run away. I got a question or two about the meeting. Okay. Uh, Chris from Leland um, really caught my attention today. Uh, Leland Consulting. He talked about uh, the economic redevelopment. Uh, a couple of things that I was just not happy about is that uh, he felt that there was no business advocacy. And I don't think the guy's paying attention to what's going on with the Aloha Business Association. He mentioned that. And, um, he mentioned the association, but then he, he said that... Nobody's doing anything. He said that it was... Uh, I think what he... He is talking about a different kind of advocacy than just business promotion. He was talking about how to advocacy for redevelopment. Remember he said there's not much opportunity to develop commercial or industrial in Aloha and Reedville because it's already developed and some of it's not being utilized, but it's a redevelopment process. The lens I think he's looking through is that he's not finding a mayor or a, a, a corporate city entity that would normally take this on which, you mentioned which that. leads me to my follow-up on this, is that uh, uh, despite that Aloha Business Association almost bankrupted itself a year ago, having this big 650-person event uh, celebrating Aloha's uh, uh, yeah. centennial and engaging businesses and basically having a trade show for Aloha, that is, had escaped Chris. And that's, that's fine, yeah. but my concern is that I, I, I have a personal bias, and I don't think urban renewal outside of a city is an appropriate tool, just because I think a city is the most appropriate vehicle in order to execute urban renewal. When we have a, a, a county-led governance that's afraid of committing to urban services, that was clearly the discussion is that do we provide urban services? Well, yes, we kind of do, but no, we kind of don't. Well, We're Commissioner really, Scott, you know, he really was, don't want to. No, well, he brought it home that we do in some areas. Yes. It, to a certain level. They, right, but they've always, the county's always said we really don't want Yeah, they've said they don't want to. Business. But the, on the other hand, they formed the Urban Road Maintenance District, the Enhanced Sheriff Patrol District. Yep. We have some urban service. Do we have a sheriff uh, that uh, his name is Deputy Slaw? Slaw. Slaw. And he does code enforcement. So we we have the you know somebody doing that, but we don't have a lot of that. And that's part of the problem is we have this mixed message. And that's kind of what the county's wrestling with. But my concern is that uh, you know just casually, flippantly using urban renewal as a possible tool really brings in a lot of implications that are really messy. Yeah. Especially since down the street in Beaverton, they made a big deal about it. Urban renewal passed. The school levy didn't, and then the urban renewal didn't generate anywhere near the money that it, it, they thought that it was going to, which left misset expectations all around. That was in the round? No, it was. Uh, well, I think the round city is coming. Wall. Yeah, I think it was city. It was a large chunk of downtown. It, 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 and a core downtown Beaverton, I think, uh, is yeah. what they wanted to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think the economy faltering basically undermined that, though. 
the revenue side of it. Well, I don't they even were, know that the county, a county can use urban renewal, can they? I think it's a city function, isn't it? Yeah. The county, the county can do an urban renewal, but the, it's, it's an onerous process, yeah. as is all of these processes. So, if I, if I may just oh, please. make a, 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 just a, a quick response. Um, Chris is very, we're all very aware of what ABA is doing and applaud ABA. You know, I'm a huge supporter of it. But Chris was talking more in light of the county doesn't provide the kind of economic redevelopment directive that a city could, uh, the kind that, that goes out and solicits businesses to augment what's there to look for those business gaps that could be filled within a community. And that's that's really the direction I, I'm... That's what I'm, I took away, too. I'm, I, yeah, well, but I'm, I'm a little chagrined that, that that wasn't a clear message because it, there's a lot of respect for what the ABA is doing. The, the, the takeaway that I've got is this historical perspective is that there was, I'm just going to call it a money grab, and that uh, Beaverton and Hillsboro <laughs> Sherry picked some, some nice commercial property and it left citizen-led initiatives to incorporate or the ability to run a, a, a financial budget. Um, it, it was the death knell for that because one of the other urban services that the county's in is clean water services. And in most of the rest of the world, the city function also includes sanitary service. Mm -hmm. So. The wishy-washiness of the county being, well, we're not really in that, but we have this franchise of clean water services. Um, it, Same can be said for fire. Yeah. And police. Uh, with the uh, enhanced sheriff yeah, patrol. Yeah. They, they recognize the policing needs of an urban area. It's different. Yeah, but I mean, it's it, and park. The, in the Beaverton area, parking, the park system is bigger than the city. Mm -hmm. It's just that the Reedville portion of the lower Reedville doesn't have that benefit. So I, I thought, my personal takeaway is I thought Chris was, was off target from a historical perspective. Um, I, I just see that, especially from this group, I'm heavily biased because at the end of the meeting, Commissioner Scouton was just beaming about the library and that you guys I was gonna bring that up. really Boy. put your shoulder to the wheel yeah. and projected some alchemy that's hardly ever been seen uh, coming out of an un unincorporated uh, community. Uh, a library with spy I thought Mike brought that up too, didn't you? The library? Or was it just Commissioner Scott? Yeah, well, it's, it, again, it's recognized that the community has stepped up and, and that's sort there of was a key to this whole discussion, but it also adds, I think, to the complexity of that discussion. Eric, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. This, is, this, is, this is a decades-old discussion yeah. uh, with the county. Well, and, and I, I thought that I tried to get him to bring it up again regarding Chris's discussion about how transportation plays into the whole thing. And I thought that that didn't get, I mean, it didn't get a second go around of, of a discussion. Because, well, it probably shouldn't because it's part of the transportation planning with, that'll come out of the TV highway corridor. Of course, that's what we're always waiting for, it seems. And, and this group will get together for another year. So, you know, the train will be through the tunnel at that point. But, you know, it's just, what, and I, so I said, hey, look, we have seen the, the popularity or the desirability of commercial properties along TV Highway diminish as congestion on TV Highway has increased. And, and that's not an unusual phenomenon in my, from my understanding in urban areas where people get on a road, they just don't want to get off because they've got to go get in line to get back on again. And it's a commuter route. That, that's a sure sign that it's a commuter route because those aren't local trips. And, you know, and that's what we've seen it in. I mean, I'd have to think twice if I'm going to go to Big Lots from where I'm at. Yeah, and you're not very far away. Yeah, I'm not that far away because it's a pain in the butt to get back going the other direction. And you can't, can't get yeah. across 185th on Alexander because of I the way. I usually go to Johnson. Yeah. So the yeah. <laughs> okay. Steve, I have a, a comment, then a, two comments, actually. The, the other thing is in the urban areas, bona fide urban areas, there are things happening that are going to impact us. There's a Walmart going in at TV High, or at uh, Cornelius Pass and, uh, and Baseline. Well, that's going to impact us. Uh, that's a destination for, I mean, uh, I think everybody in Lowe is going to wind up driving there at some sure. point. <laughs> so that's going to impact TV Highway. And 
all the roads that kind of cheat over that way, like 209, basically two, through people's neighborhoods. And uh, anyway, uh, my comment on this, I think we're probably headed towards a vote, and I, I'm not being critical, Steve, but I do have a request. I agree with your sentiments, but your first sentence there in number four really it makes it hard for me to support. Uh, I don't think the CPO should be getting behind uh, things that deem a, a major public effort as a mischievous act. If you could just strike that sentence, and I would offer up that. the TV Highway Corridor Plan and eliminate from has on three, three lines down and resume with does not address and actually attempts to underestimate. I, I'm actually okay with the hard-hitting nature of it, but it's just sort of a condemnation of the effort. Is uh, it will turn the, your audience off? Yeah. When they read that, they're not going to really look at the rest of it. Right. Yeah. yeah well, right. That was kind of. Let me explain to you why here on television for everybody. Um, are you aware of the of the background of? TV Highway Corridor Study, one of the major reasons why we're having a TV Highway Corridor Study, and it was pointed out in the meeting today, was that, that there was different designations on TV Highway Corridor, mm -hmm. in, on different people's plans. Well, there didn't used to be. That came about when South Hills, when Hillsboro decided it wanted to move south forward, forward on, on urbanization of South Hillsboro about 15 years ago now, 14 or 15 years ago. and. Um, there was a whole lot of sites being proposed uh, by Metro um, all around the urban area, everywhere. Mm -hmm. And um, We've there was these well some of those uh, matrix out. of desirability matrix. Mm -hmm. And one of the very important matrix was accessibility, of course, mm -hmm. whether or not you could get to there and what kind of transportation future did that site have. We didn't, you know, so, um, Hillsborough and Metro, and I'm not afraid to say this because I've witnessed it, got together and decided that uh, TV Highway, was, you know, you've seen these numbers before, TV Highway was about as full as it is now 15 years ago because highways only get so full because people find a different way to go and it's full. So it was about as full as it is now, maybe not for quite as long in the morning and night, but um, so uh, the South Hillsborough didn't score well in that matrix, was, in fact, didn't score well at all. And so uh, they got together, like has been known to occur, um, one dark night and decided that if the regional, regional transportation plan was going through an update, why, why couldn't you just say on the regional transportation plan that the TV highway was a freeway? Then every modeling process you wanted to put South Hillsboro through would go, gee, there's all kinds of access here. So what they did, and you can look this up, it's still that way, you know, on some plans, because all of them haven't been changed yet, but, and I'm gonna get to how this plays in the corridor here, from Murray, basically, maybe a little bit farther east of Murray, to um, Witch Hazel Road, to uh, Brookwood Road, was designated six lane, limited access facility, no driveways, and overpasses at three intersections. And ODOT, whose facility it was, said, we're not going to build that. Why? You can't designate that on the regional transportation plan. And, in, I, and I have their written testimony. If you don't believe me, I've saved a copy of their written testimony saying just that at the RTP hearings in 2000 or 2001 or whatever it was. Got them in a file at my house. And, um, but they went ahead and did it because that meant that South Hillsborough would jump way up on the accessibility <laughs> matrix. So now once they, you know, years later, now that it's finally in, it took them all this time, they didn't change it, they left it that way. As Soon as they got it in, what's the first thing they want to do? Take that designation away. The, only, the very reason that it, that it scored so high, well to me that's, it's not only bad planning, it's, uh, bad ethics. It's truly bad government. And we ought not to be condoning that. We ought to at least put it out in the daylight for everybody to see what was going on. 
So, well, my okay. comment is I'm, so not, so, that's I'm not so worried about the bait and switch. I, okay. I'm more worried about and um, that's what they did. not turning people off when they first read our, our comments. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that, but that's bit. what they've done so far with this process. That yeah. The very first meeting. If you're asking for me to support it, I, okay. I don't want a, the broader condemnation. I want just facts. I understand that. But does it help you understand what I was trying to point out? Not really, because the reality is uh, that parcel of land between Hillsborough and Beaverton is going to get urban. Uh, and it makes sense. I, sure. I agree. I so don't, I don't the reality that. is it was going to get filled out. It makes no sense that they're farming it for agriculture uh, between Hillsborough and Beaverton. So you it don't agree with having a, any kind of analysis of like, I'm just trying to like, let's, let's lay out the cards that, hey, TV Highway needs fixing now, regardless of how they got to well, the But the that is line. it. They're not going to fix TV Highway. Well, your, your paper does a good job of making the case that it, we need help. And well, I, but, that, but they, the, the, I would get to the next point. It was the very first meeting of the TV Highway Corridor Plan. The, they came in here and it was a done deal. I was sitting right there. Every entity in the room, all the people I mentioned today, voted. When TV Highway is, uh, has no regional significance, the whole TV Highway Corridor, they set up the definition of, uh, uh, what was the name? Through trips or, well basically they set up the definition of local trips to be any trip that entered the TV Highway Corridor. This is the area between Baseline and Farmington from, from uh, Cedar Hills Boulevard almost, or Murray, to 10th Avenue and Hillsborough. If a trip entered from the side and then got on the corridor, that was a local trip. Didn't matter if the trip had come from uh, uh, wherever. Could have come from Tualatin or Salem. Okay, so in other words, they set up the whole thing so that every trip, or that the majority of trips, appear to be local trips. But Steve, and, I still can't okay. support your phrase, it has been a mischievous act played on the Aloha Reveal community. I, I can't support well, that. I'm just saying it, it you, was You can, I can disagree, but if you're asking for me to support your, your letter, that's fine. Well, I, don't we think can, that's we can a, change I, I don't think that's helpful. You know, and I almost always agree with you. <laughs> on that kind of issue. And I'd fact, like to broker a compromise. In fact, Eric and I had the same discussion. Well, I, yeah, because uh, mischievous <laughs> is a substitute word on one that was more aggressive that caught my attention earlier today. I thought um, it was less aggressive. The um, <laughs> Pranked is the word I have in there. Um, so the, uh, the trade-off I'd like to offer would be this, is that to be broken out as a separate issue, separate paper, um, separate vote, and we could probably move forward with that amendment, and you could have something to take away tonight. And that I think. Why don't we just strike the sentence? Could you switch the words to maybe problematic? Yeah. I think that's a read, read how you read it earlier. Okay. Like um, the way you I'll just it. hold up in, in the red. It, it starts out the TV Highway Quarter Plan, and then skip down three lines. Does not address. Does not address. Right. It just resumes. So I'm just strictly deleting the, all those words between plan and does not. I would move to do that. It, it, the guts of your, no. your point are all still there. No, and, 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 and I think that says what I want to say in the end. Yeah. I mean, I was almost there last night when I was writing this thing. It's just that it still galls me. I mean, I love good government. Yeah. I hate bad government. I, I, and actually, I'm with you on the galling nature of it, but it's kind of, uh, I don't know that we need to... It, it's just as a, it's just as a, it's, as, it's an act that never should have occurred, you know, I mean, I agree with, hey, you're talking to the one and only elected official that supported the same areas property coming into the urban growth boundary in the 80s, me, yeah. yeah, but that's because it was proposed to be the jobs that our community didn't get. Mm -hmm. You know, so the people wouldn't have to drive all over from Aloha to have a job. It was going to be jobs over there, and the freeway ran through it, so that it had you know regional significance. It could be a you could have destination jobs there. Mm -hmm. Now you can't have any of that there because it, you can't get there. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're planning for bedrooms. But and unfortunately, you can't even have good bedrooms if you can't get to them. Mm -hmm. So you know, this is I just think it was a dirty trick. I almost used that. You know. I don't know. I'm glad that you said something. I am. Because I'm glad that you wrote this, Steve. <laughs> I, I think as a letter from from us, or from you, but endorsed by us, yes. I, I agree with your amendment. But I would like to see you write an op-ed for the paper where you yes. more strongly use whatever phrases you, you think are... 
Yeah, it'll get picked up on a blog. That. I agree with that. Yeah. It'll get picked that, up on a blog that, at least. That, 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 yeah, the that people who read Dr. You. Coleman on the blog, they'll read you know, it on actually, the blog. Because because I, I, I did that years ago on the same issue. Yeah. Actually, maybe even more than once. Yeah. It appeared, one of them appeared in the Oregonian. Yeah. And, and one of them appeared in the Argus years ago. And, you know, I mean, I, I only repeat it really for, for your benefit, to, to, for you to understand. Yeah, but see, you know, People now aren't reading a 15-year-old no. paper article. I, I think words. people now need to keep on seeing this. You know, I, yeah. you know, the, the history hasn't changed on it. Or if you write it, it'll bounce around in the blogosphere and it'll yeah. have impact. Yeah. Yes. People, people will read your writing. And if it's, it's in the, the, if it's paper, if it's in the paper, it becomes so much more of a reality or a truth than writing a letter and sending it to. Well, you an know, elected or a bureaucrat. Here's my here's my approach to that. Now is, um, <laughs> it's it's a done deal. I mean, South Hillsboro's in, and you know it's less important to talk about that. I, I that's why I think it's important for us to know that because it was done to us, but I don't think it's important that the world knows that. It, you know what I think is important is that we move on positively yeah. and figure out how. You know, if they're not going to service it, we ought to push for them to service the area, you know, if, in transportation, which is why I've got the second part of number four here, mm -hmm. is that I break that down. And there's two parts to servicing transportation in Aloha. The first part is give us adequate transportation facilities for the local densities that are going to be around us mm -hmm. to serve us and all the new traffic that South Hillsboro is going to put on the Blanton and Kinnaman. Mm -hmm. You know, let's let's guarantee that those intersection improvements are going to occur. That's up here in one of the ones above. Mm -hmm. You know, make make them buy those properties now. The, you know, the ones we're talking about, this corner right down here, mm -hmm. the Kinnaman corner, the 198th and Kinnaman, 198th and Blanton. And I don't know if you can cause Hillsborough to buy a piece of property that's going to end up in Beaverton, but something's got to be done at Blanton and 185th which would involve the post office realignment of that because their whole transportation plan is based on not putting trips on the TV highway through Reedville and Loa. It's putting them on other streets because mm -hmm. TV highway is full. So I think that and then there's the second piece of the TV highway or of the transportation equation in Loa and that's the one we have just been talking about moving commuters and goods and services and mass transit vehicles. And that's where you have a corridor. And that's what we were talking about, how the new urban area that's connected along the west is going to be very dense, and it also offers the opportunity to plan that kind of facility into the urban landscape. And I do mention um, how freeways can, you know, everybody says, well, the freeways are a very dev divisive neighborhood, divisive thing. Well, they can be if they're not wrong or if they're really big. But let's face it, a six-lane surface urban arterial is hugely divisive also because... If you look at the, the effect 26 has had, it's actually preserved the area north of 26. It, yeah. It's been a good divisive uh, tool. Well, it's that, to find the urban to the south. It's a line of demarcation. And the rural, and, and because it was built out long before it was all yeah, built it was out. Yeah, <laughs> but, but take a look at I-405 through Portland, yeah, where part of it in southwest Portland is below grade, yeah. and the streets all continue right over the top of it. Yeah, a block is gone, you know, a big swarth of a block is gone, but urban life continues as if it isn't there. And then you get into Northwest where it's raised above it all, and everything still exists underneath it. So, you know, it can be done in a way that you can move those kind of trips. I think it's more divisive to have giant surface arterials intersecting with giant surface arterials yeah. where you got two or three turn lanes. Murray and TV Highway. Well, and that's just the beginning. It's going to get much worse. You know, yeah. When you start having dual turn lanes all over the place. And, oh, yeah. You know, I mean, walk wait signs are, you know, that's a tough, it's a tough deal how to move pedestrians. Right, and, especially aging population. Exactly. And so that's why when you can separate intersections, like have small scale overpasses that are cityscape sizes, those can be very effective tools. Also, Limited access facilities can be very effective tools. Let's face it, we don't know what kind of vehicles we're going to be driving or riding in in 10, 20, 30 years from now. But we know one thing, is that part of the whole puzzle of 
a good urban transportation system involves those kinds of trips, both freight and people, that move, need to move longer distances. And why have them starting and stopping and starting and stopping and leaving smog all over everybody's neighborhood? Can we call for a vote with the amendment? Yes. Do we all know what the amendment's going to be? Are we going to change one word or change no, the phrase? We're, we're deleting a, a, about three yes. printed lines. Is there any more discussion back here? Well, I, I have a question. Uh, you have been talking about TV Highway uh, out this way. Uh, you haven't mentioned anything about Farmington Road. Now, uh, how is that going to affect that down there? Because uh, the South Hillsboro Highway, I mean, South Hillsboro, isn't going to be that many blocks from the Farmington. It's actually going to extend all the way to Farmington right along 209. So you're going to have a lot of traffic down there. Well, I it, that's because it, it's not mentioned in here because the planning that's already going on is as has a phased in building it to four lanes all the way out. First phase is in the immediate group, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, it's in the in the very near future group of uh, projects would take it from four lanes from Kinneman where that ends now you know, Kinnaman and Farmington, to 185th. And then the next, and then in the next mid-range, I think it is, to far range, moves that from 185th to 209th. So it's a, that's already called for in the plan. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, because we, the truth is, most of that right-of-way is already owned by the public. When those uh, developments went in along there, uh, almost, I mean, almost of them have occurred since, uh, that was on the planning maps. In 1983, when the community plans were adopted, a transportation plan was also adopted, and, t and Farmington Road on that transportation plan was five lanes to all the way to the then freeway that was on the map also, So, which was just past 209th a little ways. So, it, it, so they began requiring, the, as the development along Farmington occurred, that I forget what the right of way is in there. It's like 110 feet or something like that, isn't it, Mike? I, I would make a statement. It's, it's, some, it's somewhere around 100 feet of, of right of way. It's already been captured along there. So that's a, usually a big chunk of the expense is buying right of way. I still think there's a few properties that were already old existing properties along there, right around 185th probably, that that they haven't given up the right of way yet. So, so some properties would have to be purchased. But, so yeah, that's you're right. That's a necessary part of the equation, and it's already in the pipe. So I, that's why I didn't bring it up here. Likewise, some other improvements, some very similar ones. Um, I think, though, that 209th of this being proposed in, in the improvements as a three-lane road, I think I've been able to determine that which it's been called for to be a five lane for many years also. And in fact, uh, people gave up uh, a 70 foot right of way, no, not 70, a 90 foot right of way. Half, the, the east half of a 90 foot right of way was required for developments along 209th. That's why you see that big broad area beyond the street as you're going down 209th, that's before you get to the sidewalk that I mow and keep the trash out of for the first section along here south of, of Kinnaman for the last 60 years. Yeah. But uh, anyhow, yeah, that was required to be given up. But unfortunately, uh, they're only calling for that road to be three lanes, which I think is very short-sighted and I've brought to their attention in the past. And um, it also means that if they don't require more right-of-way from the South Hillsboro folks, those guys won't have to give up anything in terms of right away, and the whole thing will built on the stuff that I gave them, you know, and that everybody else that lived on this side of the road gave them, which irks me to no end, when they're the ones that are going to be putting all the traffic on, and it's still going to be a major north-south access way for a long, long time. The people who are really going to take it is the folks uh, north of TV Highway on 209, because what they've done now is they've built a destination, the Katama uh, Max, Line. So that, that whole corridor be 209th and you wind around and you get on rock and then you wind up on 205th, that's going to be a major north-south. It already is. 
I, it already is, and when they build out South Hillsboro, it's going to be really busy. Well, they've busy. done the worst of all things. When you close down one road, Cornelius Pass, to rebuild it twice, and you're going to have to do it again when you rebuild the sections from, from Mike's back there shaking his head, when you rebuild the section from Lois to TV Highway because they only made it two lanes wide, when you do that, what you do, it's like, it's like we're these white rats in a box. They teach, they, you know, by rote, now we can drive across TV Highway up, you know, all just that exact route you just described in, in our sleep because we've been doing it a lot in the last four years. And we will be continuing to do that for a while uh, because of the road, and, and, you, and people don't quit those routes. When you get the new road, a lot of people stay on the old road. So, yeah, and it's a dangerous, that's very unfortunate that it wasn't planned out better to be all through connected, which is one of the major things that, in all these years I've been representing CPO 6 with the city of Hillsborough and the South Hillsboro thing, I've had a lot of opportunity to interact with their transportation group, because there was nobody. For a long time, they didn't have a transportation group. When South Hillsboro started, they didn't have a traffic engineer on staff. I forced them to have this is a true story. I forced them to have a transportation engineer to deal with the issues of South Hillsville. So about four years into it, they maybe more than that, maybe like six years into it, they hired one. Didn't let him work on South Hillsville for a couple of years because there was quite a backlog of stuff that they needed to have a transportation engineer work on, oddly enough. And uh, so he got around to it a couple of years later, and he uh, has remarked to me about how he wished he had gotten involved earlier and that... Uh, bring me back to the story, the city of Hillsborough has not, is not very, uh, their transportation system isn't very well laid out in my estimation because they believe in a lot of curvy roads that, you know, wind around and if you follow a lot of their north-south roads, they end up a couple blocks apart by the time you get up to Walker Road or, you know, up, up that to the north end because they don't have, they aren't trying to make any grid. They were just allowing developers to, to name the route. And I think that's just a poor way to lay it out. It just, it's hard to service areas, although you can create some unique industrial opportunities that way, and they certainly have used it to their advantage. But I, you know, I had, had to go, I've been going around and around with them for years about not, not understanding their place in the region and the, even in the county. So cities can sometimes be very border oriented, you know, they only see the roads as far as their borders. And one of the jobs of the county is to help the rest of the cities in the county understand that we're all in this thing together and that the county has a role in maintaining a countywide system. And uh, uh, the region ought to be also helping everybody understand that, that we're all in it together and that we have there's roads of regional significance too. So I get off my soapbox. So I read this. Tell, tell us what you're striking. Okay, we're going to strike the fourth one. Says, TV, TV Highway Corridor Plan uh, attempts to. Let me skip down three lines. Attempts to understate and several of the low rebuild communities' current and predictably worsening future transportation problems. Hmm? Isn't that what you said? No, no, no. No, it does not address. The TV Highway Corridor Plan does not address. Oh, okay. So I, okay. I do have a question, Steve. Yeah, when, I, I, when it comes to things like actually attempts to understate, I read that here and I read other things like that in this document. Like it, um, in number three, the city's plans, the second sentence to date, have not addressed this issue and, and have in fact misrepresented the potential for impacts even though the subject has been presented to them. Uh, where are the, what are the, I mean, you me to tell you the facts getting your facts? Well, okay. here, I can give you the facts. I don't want them. Well. No, no it's, <laughs> no, listen, I'm, I'm okay, I remember, it's not that, again, you're, you're going to be talking to people, you're trying to you're convince right. them to see your point of view, but if you say in fact, and then don't have anything to, to I say do what have those it. facts are, do, do you have that for them? In other words, yeah. you want, okay. as a CPO member, you want me to, to uh, support the, but I don't know. I'd be willing to change that. What should we change that to? Ideas? Well, I, I, I just want to offer my support for this gentleman, too, in the fact that a 
lot of these documents become public record and will live on long after this group. But you want to present yourself in a professional manner yeah. every single time. Yes. And it's the integrity of everybody in this room. And so I agree that some of those statements feel uh, as if we're attacking them. Now, granted, we have an agenda, they have an agenda. You know some history there, but I think for the printed piece, for the written word, that it should just um, raise to yes. a higher level. Let's do that. Stay up. Could you, so, could you so, and that's my, yes, so that you just bring, my begs my other question. Okay. This this committee met once already. Is that what you're saying, Steve? This is a newly formed committee, the LCC. No, it's not newly formed. It's been formed since the beginning, and but they don't meet very often. Beginning of when? What the lower rebuild study? I think this is their second or third meeting. They haven't met in thirteen meeting? months. Oh, okay. They haven't sorry. met in thirteen months. It's part months. of their lower rebuild study. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Uh, yes, okay. it is. Okay. When do they meet again? Early uh, June, early summer. Probably early summer. Okay, so here's here's what I'd like to, if you don't mind, Steve, is, and with what you said, uh, I'm sorry, I don't recall your name. Okay, it doesn't matter. It does matter, but uh, anyway, <laughs> just to soften a little bit so that we're not attacking. Um, uh, what do you want to strike? What, I, I, think, what uh, I would like for Steve, I'm asking him to bring it back at our next meeting with some of the modification to the language so that... Well, why don't we just do it now so that everybody's happy? I think we well, did it on the last one, didn't right. we? Right, but see, it's after 8 o'clock now, and uh, I mean, this I, this wasn't, I don't know, I guess I'm okay. I'm okay with it, because I really, yeah, I'm okay. Um, I'm not well, if you ready bring it to, back, you could maybe add something to it. Um, well, you could keep in the harsh language, just back it up with some facts. Well, the, uh, the hard-hitting nature is okay, but the uh, sort of condemning of the effort, I think, is... is, is Problematic, but uh, because it condemns a lot of people who have really worked really hard. Um, well, but can I, give you, can I give you the background on the flooding one? That's okay. I know, I know the background. I, I'm, I'm totally there. I know. I know the neighborhoods had flooding problems. No, no, it doesn't have anything to do with that. It has everything to do with how uh, their plan to handle surface water. Their plan to handle surface water doesn't say anything about flooding upstream. Yeah. Okay, and. Their plan to handle surface water, which would might occur if when you put lots of water into Butternut Creek. Also, it misrepresents all the water going to Butternut Creek when a portion of it comes east. I mean, they completely missed it. I brought this to their attention at their very first open house over a dozen years ago, mm -hmm. and then, I'm, to my knowledge, they never fixed it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, there's, I mean, they've had all. A dozen years to, to no, and I'm not saying don't 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 hammer them with the facts. Um, but if we're going to table it for next meeting, something that's on my mind, I was going to actually uh, suggest we bring to vote next uh, a, 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 an endorsement from the CPO six is to support the city of Hillsborough's efforts to restart the West Side bypass discussion. Yeah, and I know we we don't want to call yeah, it the West Side what, bypass because that's, what that's this one does that's radioactive. Well. It sort of confuses the issue when you talk about undergrounding the 405. Uh, I would, uh, the phrase I like is the West Side Parkway, because uh, if you lived out east, the BW Parkway that connects to Baltimore and Washington D.C., you think you're driving through a forest, but you're actually driving through a very heavily urbanized area. But the Parkway is so well done. You have the the through freight traffic and the and the commuter traffic, and it and it's just really nice. Why can't we have one of those here? We could if we if we set our sights that high on a parkway that would have bike lanes and inviting pedestrian crossings rather than death traps. And uh, Well, the problem with, with the West Side Bypass is where to put it. Well, we've got to start thinking about it because it, it needs to be done. Oh, I, yeah. I personally, I 100% agree with you. Yeah. It's just, uh, well, yeah, the Denny old footprint is dead. We need a new footprint that's discussion. further west. We're right. What was the old footprint? The old footprint, I think, was the Cornelius Pass right away, essentially. That was the second. The first footprint was 185th. Then they pushed it out to Corn Pass. And, no, um, that's not true. First footprint was, and I have the maps from the 60s. Um, the first, in fact, you also sent me one of the maps from early times. Okay. That it was followed the BPA power line. That was always the way. Because the idea was, don't go over Cooper Mount. Go around it. Mm -hmm. So, And in fact... Yeah, but um, the BPA power lines are right out here. Yeah, but no, but they. You're talking about the interior ones. No, the B, I'm talking the, the about ones this through. one. 
The VPA right here? Oh, yeah. here. Cornelius Pass. VPA power lines. These ones are yeah. over here. It came down through that valley and, that and Cornelius they, Pass takes down. Those, those don't go over. Pass. They yeah. don't go over Cooper Mountain. They go around it. They go all around Clark Hill Road. I think the reality is the West Side Parkway needs to be envisioned considerably further west. Well, it doesn't do the same thing. I don't. I don't think you understand space, urban freeway spacing because well, you don't. It's you don't, true. I don't. But uh, well, I'm just. I'm trying to. The old footprint's dead. That's for sure. Well, I don't think so. Show Show me a way west of Hillsboro that you wouldn't have to cross the Twelve River a bunch of times and go through vast amounts of. Uh, uh, floodplain. <laughs> it's just not going to happen out there. And even if it did, it wouldn't do anything for the urban area in here because it's too far. You, you, need, you, you need proper spacing. It's like, um, it's like anything else. If, you, you know, if, you, if, you, if your arterials are spaced up according to how much traffic they have to, I mean, are sized according to how much traffic they have to carry. If they're required to carry uh, traffic that would rather be on a limited access facility, then they have to be very large. And people aren't going to drive eight or ten miles to go get on a freeway to go to go around. Also, there's no good place to get through the mountains up there, or to cross onto Sylvie's Island if you did. So there's a, there's opportune places to do all of those, and they've been determined a long time ago. Steve, yeah. in, in March, April, or May, when we have Councillor Dirksen out here, I think that is the person to really head the discussion and to put the pressure on because north of, um, of uh, uh, TV Highway is going to be Councillor Harrington's district, mm -hmm. and the flexibility, I think, for siting is going to be on the south because it's not built out. Yeah. And I, I think we should postpone, we should involve that we should also invite Janine Rustad or Don Odermont out to that discussion and present a policy statement from CPO6 in terms of whether or not we want it, and if we want it, where we want it, and give some methodology about where we want it. But I, it's not a discussion for tonight. What I'd like yeah. to do is wrap and either take a vote on that or not take a vote on that, but decide that next because we got other committee meeting reports. Yeah. We got to we got to move on. Okay. So how about if the number three, the first sentence stayed. Second one, the city's plans to date have not addressed this subject, and then strike all the rest of that sentence. The northeast portion of the plan community drains east into Reedville Creek and so forth. And then I just outlined where the water goes. Okay, so we're striking in? From after the, uh, from on this the issue. third line down, after addressed. Addressed, period. And so yeah. this issue onward. And not been addressed. It could just be that, it could just be a period. Okay. And then the next two lines, minus the word the at the end of the second one, would be stricken. So we would strike this issue and have, in fact, misrepresented the potential for impacts east, even though the subject has been presented to them for over a decade. Yeah. So that's all gone. What about the next sentence? I think that that's correct. I mean, you know, that's what we're pointing out, is that their plan doesn't, doesn't show that. Okay, so then we would also strike on number four. Um, we, would, we would leave in the TV highway corridor plan, and then we would strike has been mischievous act played on a low rebuild community, um, then the entire ne next sentence, and then we would resume at, uh, after on the, the fourth line down, it's certainly, we'd strike that, but then we would continue on. So it would read the TV highway corridor plan does not address comma and actually attempts to understate this, uh, several of the lower. No, excuse, take that part out. And then you just okay. you just go straight to. Uh, let's see, the TV Highway Corridor Plan misstates several of the lower Reedville community's current and predictably worsening future transportation problems. You add the word misstates, of right at several, and strike everything before that. Has everybody got that? No, I'm not seeing. I'm. I'm Trying to find it. My suggestion's up there with you with the red ink on it. Well, I just was getting rid of that understated part, too. It doesn't serve any function. Okay. Uh, just 
does not address and actually attempts to understand, just strike that also. I, you know, that's hard hitting. That's not that's not condemning. I, that's hard hitting. I, I'm okay with hard hitting stuff. Just not not the uh, sort of um, maligning of their effort stuff. I just think misstates is hard enough that for you know softball. Huh? No. Uh, as you see fit. We got we got to move this along. So. Okay. What? You know, I don't want to argue over one one word. I just you know if we're getting rid of stuff, let's get rid of it. Now, is someone going to fix this and bring us the corrected copy next month? Steve's going to do that. Yeah, I can do okay. that. I just really wanted to move it because Mike wanted to give it to the leadership group now. But are you okay with not giving it to him now? Well, you can. We can um, vote on it. You can fix it and email it out. Yeah. Okay. I was, I was that doing that in Jersey Yeah. Steve. Okay. So, so yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what the plan was, was for us then, to either approve or not approve our support for it, and then he can he make the approve, corrections and email it. Approve with the changes that we made. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. And, and, and I would on. just I would just uh, also suggest that WA code down at the bottom would be written out in full words, Washington County. The only reason it's not is so that I wouldn't run on the I, second page. I know, but maybe because and when it's, you're, you're right. And when it's an email, um, it won't matter. Yeah, but me, I was thinking about striking that part about South Hillsborough because, I mean, South Underground, like Southwest. Steve, Florida, you're getting this time because we respect the immense amount of work you, you put into this. I think this, it, so. it, it doesn't it doesn't say Westside Bypass to me. If you're trying to link the discussion back to Westside I'm Bypass, I'm not. Okay. I, I I don't like what Westside Bypass has got bad connotation. I know, but talk about shutting people off. The obtuse off. reference <laughs> to undergrounding 405 uh, takes me as a reader to someplace. Completely different, off topic. It it, it really takes. Well.